This is our design, Travis and I designed this park, or this transformation from a factory-based landscape to more of a park-based landscape, sort of inspired by the slogan on the stationery bag that we, were, we got for the little knives, and this was the bag that we cut up, and on it says there's no better. No, there's no best, just better. There's no best, only better. So that's like the theme park idea. And this is the kind of school that's located pretty close to the park. So the idea is that more parents move into this kind of neighborhood and use this facility that's being built by the government as a theme park. So a movement from more like industrial space to more a better, not a better place. Yeah. A better place. Thanks, Ramon. Someone wants to. Hello, Heather. Hello. Do you want to talk about your, your drawing? Your design? Okay. Um, well, we started off with uh, present, and then here is two years later. Two years. Shipping to manufacturing over to the other side, and as um, the companies move over to the other side of the river, um, there's more green spaces uh, and more residential spaces opening as more people come in to work. Um, this is the 10 year more green space, more roads for housing, and then a um, pedestrian friendly bill, um, bridge. And um, the new skyscraper. <laughs> okay, so the title of this piece is uh, the present, the present, the present of multiple futures from multiple pasts, and the time duration that we have is actually time travel. So it's the present and multiple futures that could exist. Okay. And um, nice and nonlinear. Very nonlinear. <laughs> uh, it's the it's a, a future branching a branching narrative. The future is a branching narrative. Um, this is the present, and, and the present um, has a kind of signal moments of the everyday. That's what these, um, these eruptions are, moments in the everyday where the flows of which uh, life is, the, the flows get channeled in a certain way. So the line kind of represents the flows that, um, that are the dynamism of, every, of everyday life. And these are the practices of the everyday in which um, the flows get channeled to produce or evolve or emerge as one future or another or many others that we could have imagined but didn't have enough pieces of paper. So future A, which, where is Bessie? I'm here. Bessie, <laughs> talk about future, future A. Uninhabited. <laughs> Textural, it's kind of a, a, yeah. a post apocalyptic back to the future, ground zero, everything's been labeled, we're, we're scrambling to survive again. And then future B. Future B is built up, but there's no grids, everything is just sort of piled up on, on top of each other. Um, there's a bit of logic, grids, but they're still sort of not, they're still just mixed up in your life. I think the point is that um, we make the future, but not under conditions of our own making. Who else? We want to get through as many as we can. My partner Cole and I um, made it's like we, we, didn't, we don't have a title really, That's but okay. it's okay. over three minutes of time, I guess. <laughs> um, this person lives here, and they're going to work, and the road is overtaking society, and the central business district is being built up, and there's a little person, not to be morbid, but there's a little person jumping off the building because <laughs> new with new objects, new human behavior comes about. And, um, <laughs> and, there's, and there's two towers, ironically. Yeah. 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 Um, so, is that a problem, two towers? Well, gremlins and. Oh, right. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay, I think we didn't, we just ran out of time. That's all. Um, and then, yeah, Mobius strips woven into society, and there's more than one because it manifests itself in different ways. So, public, um, private ownership. And anything else? Um, the park. The park. This one? Yeah. yeah. 
somewhere. Um, and these are two phases uh, of relocating uh, Chengzhou and Sun to sort of, you know, very far places outside of the city. But instead of making them live very far outside of the center of anything, to recenter the uh, life of the city around them. Um, so to take this place where the intersection of two roads and, and uh, many travelers come through, uh, the first is, uh, phase would be to um, construct a, a kind of a commercial building where, where people were sort of forced to slow down and stop and maybe buy things, um, along with uh, relatively high density uh, villages, but not, um, not the gigantic towers. Then the second phase, which is a little weirder, is um, to actually change the road, to sink the road and make it go um, so it's not straight, to actually start to take some of the uh, the water forms and mimic them in, in, in the way that the um, automobile circulation goes too, in order to slow people down, in order to make them stop, and to have weaving roads that uh, sort of go over and under one another, what some of them surface, some of them sunk, uh, in order to give people who live here a walkable, bikeable space, as well as uh, the, the kinds of um, transportation that people have. But the idea being to remake this a place and not just to put people into a non-place way outside of the city. And I would add, that, that's the post-internal combustion solution. Yes. <laughs> and this one is working with the, the uh, rigidity of the, the road stuff. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe we can start moving around this way. Someone over here. Um, I, I guess I was started really with the idea of, of climbing and um, and so we thought about uh, the five-year plan, you know, the, the very sort of central uh, idea of, of socialism in, in, in China, that everything can change every five years, and ev everything is designed for every five years. And so we took uh, today as the present and 2014 as the five-year. And uh, our idea was to... Um, um, sort of green the spaces uh, of the river vines and, and sort of give, give people uh, access to parks and, uh, and create access to, to the rivers. Um, so we did that and as well the other thing was to create a semi-natural lake. Um, we are also end up putting a road um, just because we're not completely opposed to uh, <laughs> Development, but I think that that was just a, a better sense of development. Uh, but it was just of a greening of a city. and just manipulate the time, which I think we can't really do or should only be doing by reflecting upon the time. So what we did was um, creating this mobility of uh, three stages, so there is still a kind of sequence of temporality, but um, we were also playing with the warping of time within um, each of the following um, warp spaces. And what we also did was basically um, mark the 
the impossibility to erase time and sort of like reroute time and this kind of mapping by a cutting out some of the shadows in um, the second um, sort of like object here and by cutting out the green spaces in the third one, which are, um, these are the spaces in which uh, basically uh, growth shows in a kind of organic, natural way. And um, what we also did, and we should have, I think, marked it a bit better, was actually connect these three planes through the, uh, the Pearl Tower, right? So using like one of the monuments, right? One of the, the monumental, uh, supposedly timeless markers, right? But of course they're not, in order to connect these different places. Um, so I just wanted to really have a title either, but what we, <coughs> what we tried to do here was play with the, with the notion of um, the imaginary and the material and tangible. So as you can see here, this is like an area of Shanghai that's actually very close to where we are located. And this is sort of the original sort of map, which we kept as it is. And uh, we sort of imagined like, you know, living in, in that area, which, you know, you can see there's not a lot of green. Um, how people might imagine while living in, in that area um, being uh, located somewhere else. Um, and so it's like a little attractive piece, you know, you can open up a patch and then see a patch of water that is like, that has a little boat attached. So it's, it's more like, it's more a figure of like, how my people, you know, who live in, in this very sort of like concrete fashion space, you know, how might they imagine like a space elsewhere that has water and it's, and it's green. And at the same time also, you know, um, being provocative and be like, well, how would the landscape actually change if you would incorporate more of well, like organic landscaping in, into, into the city. And then sort of on the other side, sort of flipping, flipping this model here, we had like a, a we had another um, patch which was like, um, so I don't know if you guys can see this, so on the left side it's mainly um, agriculture, on the right side there are like water fields. And it seems here on, on the side of, of the agriculture there's like uh, sort of um, upscale housing and, and sports um, facilities. So imagining like how can we provoke people who live in a quite comfortable area where, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of space, you know. Um, how, can, how can those people like, um, um, you know, um, be encouraged to imagine a space where there's, you know, much more density. Um, and so there's, so those two layers basically mean there's sort of the virtual layer that's underneath that's not necessarily visible as, as the quite visible space we're living in here in Shanghai. You know, what if we juxtapose those two layers in, in this other context? Do you want to say that? Yes, you said it very well. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, this one here. Uh, well, I was just thinking about uh, different modes of juxtaposition. What's made possible through these openings? And, uh, yeah, I wasn't really thinking anything at all, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that some kind of shape emerge out of like random cutting and folding and putting things together and I wanted to sort of replicate the very process. Does that make any sense? Um, you know, it always changes its juxtaposition with every opening that you look into. Uh, the structure is never really closed. It remains, uh, remains uh, permeable. Open, kind of. Yeah. 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 That's that's good. Yeah. Okay. I didn't really pay attention to what the image and the map was all about, so it's all the way around. Huh. All right. Um, I'll mention ours really quickly because it's a bit different than a lot of the others. Um, instead of becoming master architects wielding our power over the space, we decided that we would be um, we would try and model the experience of the space over time throughout the day. So we tried to do in a very sort of subtle way um, how the space that we were given how it would how you would experience or what you would experience if you were there in the morning, midday, and evening. So, sort of a, a different take on, on time, I guess.
device is viewing, uh, you can call it a viewing machine um, in some sense. So you can notice that um, the center is being cut out and our idea is that you can take this device um, while you are walking on the street. So our uh, understanding of um, time and space is through the experience of walking. So while you are walking on the street, you'll be looking through this device thinking that the center is constantly missing. But um, by asking people to look through the device, it is not to say that let's look for the center all the time. Um, this is why there are um, lines cutting through the center constantly. Um, this is a, an invitation for people to draw together their memory of the places, the smell of the food while they're walking. Um, so it is like a memory conjuring toy that you can take with you while you're walking. Originally, we worked from this kind of greener piece of it, and then we cut out all the, the pieces that we want to keep. So it's kind of development in this retro style because like, we think overdevelopment is problematic, and we need more green space, and also we need a kind of meta metaphysical space for people to connect. So keep these kind of... Um, buildings together with, the, with a golf course looking <coughs> area right next to them for recreation purposes. And here, uh, we just think it looks cool. We kind of built it in, in intuitively too, but like little kids when you ask them why this piece is there, and they always say, well, I don't know, it just looks cool. So I think um, during the process, that's what we, we did quite often too. Oh, it looks cool this way. So, and then, but then we use this piece of thread, try to thread everything together because we realize it's impossible to, to do without factories, without um, working. I mean, so we keep them on the other side of it. But we can't do without them because we have to be sustained by, by production, by, by those things we produce in the factory. So we do keep them on the other side, so that's the kind of the 
symbolic opposite of humanity right here. We do have our own living space, but we do need our workspace and production space as well. And then we sort of try to conflate the, um, the, the spaces. We know that a space is scarce in a lot of big cities. So ide ide idealistically, they can coexist, but then somehow we need to find a way to for them to conflate the spaces, but at the same time, we maintain the space that we need. And there's kind of an underground area that we keep all the kind of um, pieces that we don't um, really like, not very pleasant looking ones under here because we can't really get rid of them anyway. So, but then that's for kind of future development, you know, trying to figure out what to do with all these. And this is kind of a, a process. We cut out those pieces that we want to take over here. So it's in the state of becoming, not being yet. This is our, our not so, um, we really think it was a kind of realistic scenario. Quite <laughs> linear and linear. take into account how development works. So, from this river or ocean, uh, we constructed, uh, well, uh, it actually it was a Japanese investment, right? <laughs> and there is a discount for uh, participants of the seminar. <laughs> and then we, we thought that maybe uh, new cities would uh, develop out of uh, different centers of gravity, whereas before maybe it was uh, resource, uh, access to resources or, or uh, transportation. Now uh, a hotel and a recreation center can, can give rise to a, to a new city. Uh, I just wanted to add that as uh, poor humanities academic types, when we are handed or rather we picked this prime property, we thought we would make the most use of it. Uh, like good capitalists. And we took Victoria's provocation very seriously. So uh, we were thinking of creative destruction, which is, which I think is obvious. There is also resilience here. It's just at this scale you can't see it. <laughs> 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 That's why you have to go visit. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can't help it, but I, I, I would love to hear about this. <laughs> I, even if you don't want to talk about it, I would like to hear. I say it's me, Chinese person. Okay。呃，这是一个未来的区域。就说，嗯，就说这是一层一层这样子。这下面是大陆下或者怎么样，然后下面上面一层，这是一个陆地，这是一个住宅区，然后这可能是娱乐休闲区，然后这可能是我们
uh, Google Earth and the fact that it, it, it's sort of a very static image of, uh, from, of the Earth. Uh, because if you check out, I'm sure you all know this, uh, if you check out Google Earth, you'll see a car that was parked in your driveway a month ago. So there's this sense that it's live, but in fact it's not live. So we took the idea of the mobile um, as a tool to um, just make the space more dynamic in terms of temporality. So, uh, so this what we saw is a very static space. Uh, we just wanted to drench it in time. And so we made little cones of time. And the mobile is also, it's a child's toy, so it's very playful, but it's also nonlinear. It's interactive. It, it flows in time. So we wanted to take the image and fragment it and, and put it in time and space right here and now. So that's our. Do you have anything? Okay, so our primary image was pretty much just the countryside, and so uh, we didn't really have a plan when we were starting. We wanted to make something like a model, but I think our temporality came out of the fact that uh, uh, Ju Xin Wei here is from Shanghai, so I think the thing we were talking about is what is the relationship between the countryside and then the suburbs. And then, without really thinking about it, we started covering up all of the countryside, and so we were sort of talking about, uh, I don't know if this is academic discourse or if it has to do with planning, but you know, the invisibility of, of the countryside. And so uh, a couple of anecdotes that, that uh, we were talking about as it was going on. Uh, he's a student at Fudan University, and his, his, his travel from the suburbs every day on the bus is something like uh, uh, almost two hours, right, he was yeah. saying. And we were talking about the night delivery trucks bringing the food, and so we, we were just trying to yeah. think about these relationships. This is a truck. <laughs> Do you want to add anything? Yeah. No. Our image is um, really already suggested a developmental sequence. And so this is really a meta critique on the development process because. It's about human environment relations in the Delta here in the water world of Suzhou, where we may have had the only images with clouds, but we actually we started thinking about that. And so this is um, taking the middle plane as this, this cyclonic disruption. It's a tornado. It's a, yeah. And it's taking out just all of the just tender spots of junk. I love it. <laughs> and it's, it's sucked up its environment and tossed it back. you get up to Tianjin and Dinhai in the contemporary period, things look much more orderly and kind of like the docklings as opposed to some of the stuff that happened in the south in the 1980s. Um, well, uh, yeah, well, well, and perhaps the last one, which is the last one in the time sequence, a few years after the uh, typhoon uh, has come through, um, is the idea is to rebuilt as much as possible from the old city, but in the spirit of development to layer it with uh, these hyper-contemporary uh, global uh, constructions uh, like this space station-like thing, which might have been something very different, but um, uh, also like uh, as you can see, the city bursts out of its, fra its frame and uh, already points elsewhere into an uncertain future. Um, so in this, we were um, primarily concerned with looking at the uh, edge condition along the riverbank, and um, the progression was over a six-year period. Um, and just playing with, um, you know, seeing how the residential areas would grow, how industrial areas would grow, and how the waterfront would uh, could be converted back into public space. Um, I don't think we reached any conclusions, but do you have anything to add? And you, maybe you could just, um, and you use cutting and you use tape to do 
you made it more three-dimensional? We did. Um, the idea was um, to add some uh, some iconic towers and, and in the industrial zone, um, and then connecting a lot with just bridges and trying to trying to think about how we can sort of stitch across this river and, and see how it would um, narrow over over four years. So we weren't very creative with like three-dimensionality, but we tried to identify some of the the actual um, facilities on the map. So we thought this was a school and it was sort of in a suburban um, surrounding and there were some factories throughout the space. So we sort of collected all the factories and um, the haze, the cloud that was that appeared on the map and created sort of this area where factories were centered and this intermediary um, suburban development. And then tried to double the kind of um, we were trying to create a theme park with the kind of greenery that was available. So uh, we also noticed there was something on the packaging of the stationery and the brand was, what they call them, let me see, no best, only better, which was perfect for a theme park in China. Kind of slogan. <laughs> so we put that on the theme park and um, that's all we had time for. Well, well my, my partner has left, so I'm the only one who can sign it. You know, we try to look at three different historical uh, time frame, uh, a time, sorry, time, time frame of the same space. Uh, this 1971, this 1992, this is 10 years after now. The, re the reason for 1992 is that it's a year that we, uh, Shanghai start to have a kind of commercialism, you know, so it's after nine, 1989, the political repression, and then three years later, Shanghai becomes a space to have a kind of, you know, kind of thing. So uh, in 1971, well, first of all, there's no highway there. We covered the highway with those old houses, and this, there were also no trains. So, but at that time, there were, cho were, were there, there were cho trolley there, so we used the flag to represent it. In 1992, um, well, basically, we just used uh, advertisement sign to represent the whole commercialism there, and well, 10 years up now is like 2019. Um, we kind of feel a kind of cool half ish building here. <laughs> and we kind of think that at that time, you know, because we all talk about ecology, sustainability, so we put all the space all green, rather than a more building. Probably we would have just only one building in Shanghai, one extremely high. <laughs> skyscraper which house, you know, I don't know, two million people <laughs> like this and we have a kind of complainer space, you know, it's like uh, you have a subway system or whatever that you no longer need highways on the ground, you know, you only have parks on the ground and you have a big building and everything goes underground. So something like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well um uh, this has been a great journey from Suzhou to Shanghai, and they completely um, recombined uh, in, our, in our walk around here. Um, so we've, we're all uh, been traveling today. And, um, and if you guys are wild, you're not afraid uh, to engage the city um, uh, at all. Uh, so I think it's been really a good uh, experience as we all start to know each other if they 
work of designing a special science. So I understand that not everyone is going to be able to get to your patch, but I would like to challenge you to, to try and to bring uh, some of your photos and some of your thinking and your observations um, on the um, on the 21st uh, and to share that uh, back with everyone. Um, so thank you all. It's been such a success.